Okay, how's it going guys? Today we are going to do a lecture on cage editing. And cage edit editing is really a uh, helpful and powerful tool in terms of developing some complex geometries, uh, especially getting some really interesting surface forms. And with these forms, you can develop some other geometries to create something uh, tectonic. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. Okay, so I am going to, I'm gonna just make a surface, just a plain rectangular surface. And we're gonna do some techniques to develop this into something more interesting. So I am going to type cage edit. It's asking me to select the captive object, so I'm going to select this. Now it's selecting the control prop object, so we want to select the bounding box. That will select the geometry. And then it asks for the coordinate system, just hit enter. So now it's giving you some prompts on how many points you, you can see. So obviously there's four points in the x direction, four in the y, for it in the Z. Let's hit enter to just use it as a default. Okay, so now you see uh, these points and this is where you can start doing some editing. And here is where uh, using the gumball tool is really helpful. So make sure the gumball tool is turned off. You can see when I have it turned off, you know, I don't have anything. Uh, actually, when I have it turned off and I select these things, nothing happens. But when I do select it, and now I have to actually reinstate the control point. So in this situation, uh, if this situation occurs, select the box and then click this command, which is show object control points. So I want to have it to be arced. So I'm going to select these, and the gumball has it. Uh, uh, has it shown. So I'm just going to pull this thing right here, pull it right here to give this arch. Now I want to have these corners to point down. So I'm going to select this. I'm going to hit uh, Control C, Control C, I mean Shift C, hit Shift C, and Shift C. So I've selected this and now I'm going to use my gumball to stretch these. So you can see that it's now stretching. Now, I want to maybe do some interesting things. So I'm going to select this point and this point, and then also select this point and this point. Oh, oops, let me con hit control for this and this point. Now, the, main, the important thing about using the gumballs is that you choose your points in a symmetrical manner to get a symmetrical uh, result. So I'm going to stretch in the red direction, see what happens. So actually, I'm not really liking this. So let me stretch it in the, nope, let me stretch, nope, let me stretch. Actually, let me just stretch it in this way. So you can see that there was some transformation right there. And let me select this point this point, this point, let me widen this. Let's see what happens. Okay, you can see it's sort of widening out. Okay, so, and if I want to turn, get rid of the cage edit, I can just delete this. And you can see from just a simple uh, surface, I was able to create something now pretty interesting. Now, what can we do with this result? Well, we can make things look a little bit tectonic. So one strategy to do is let's rebuild this so we can see more lines because we're going to use the extract wireframe command. So I'm going to go rebuild. I'm going to select this surface and I am just going to use the defaults that they're there. And now I am going to go to extract 
I'm going to go to wireframe, extract wireframe. So I'm going to select this. Now that all the lines, all the segments have turned into lines, let me just freeze the surface. So next I can go to pipe. I'm going to select multiple. Let me select all of these. Uh, I don't know what my scale is, but let me just see what happens if I put 25. Okay, it's a little bit small. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to go to pipe. I'm going to click on select multiply. I'm going to just do for diameter 200. Okay, so you can see that you know I can develop something that looks very tectonic. This could be an overhang or whatnot, or maybe a sculpture. So let's do another geometry to play around with this command. So I'm going to just make a circle. I'm going to select it. I'm going to go over here and make it into a surface. I'm going to go to Cage Edit. I'm going to select this. I'm going to click Bounding Box. Select this. Let me change the X count to 12. Let me change the Z count to 1. Oh, it's not letting me do 1. Let me see 3. And then I'm going to hit Enter. OK, so why don't I select all the bottom points here? And then I'm going to hit, so hit Shift. Let me hit control of this. So, whoops. Let me pull this. Actually, no, I want to pull it down. I'm going to pull it down some more. And then. Let me select this point, and as you can see, I'm, I'm taking a very symmetrical approach, so my geometry looks, you know, uniform, but, you know, you can obviously do whatever looks interesting, so creating this geometry, and, you know, if I want to start again, I can still do use another uh, cage edit. So let me type cage edit if I want to start fresh. I can click on this bounding box, enter. I'll just use the same points. So I can maybe, oops, let me turn the points on. I don't want to really do that. We don't want to. Now it's getting a little too deformed. So I'm going to stick with this. And one strategy that I can do is I can use the flow along surface to maybe map this geometry here. And I obviously did a, a lecture on flow along surface. Or I could use the paneling tools to map this into the geometry. So if I want to do the flow along surface, the first thing I want to do is click on this geometry, go to Analyze, click Bounding Box, hit Enter, because this will allow me to array the geometry. So I'm going to click on Array. I'm going to select this object in the X direct X direction, I'm going to put 36, Y direction, 36, Z direction, <clears throat> 1. So I am, as you know, with the bounding box, it, you can easily get the array. So I'm going to click to this corner and click to this diagonal. And one of the things I'm going to do is I want to make this into a group. Whoops. 
Let me do this again. Gray, oops. Oops, 36, 36, 1. I'm going to hit header. Let me just get these geometries out of the way. I'm going to make do a bounding box in this corner because I have to create a surface underneath. So let me go Now I want to delete this box. I want to block this. I'm gonna delete this box. I'm going to select this as a group. I'm going to click on my middle mouse key and unlock pressing the right mouse key. Okay, so let me go to flow along surface. I'm going to select these surfaces. I'm going to hit the control to deselect this, the plane. I'm going to hit enter. The base surface will be here and the target surface will be this new geometry. So let's see what happens. <clears throat> Okay, so you can see there is a little bit of deformation because obviously uh, the, 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 the way to flow, it can't go precisely of the geometry, but nevertheless, it still gets, you can still get a pretty cool effect from this, uh, from this flow along surface. Uh, we, can we can also use a different method to flow these geometries on these complex surfaces. So I'm going to copy this. I'm just going to take, I'm going to ungroup this. I'm going to copy. I'm going to use my paneling tools. So I'm going to go to paneling tools, create paneling grid, surface domain number. I'm going to select the surface, hit enter. I'm going to do these prompts. I'm good with that. And you can see there's a bit of irregularity. So, and then the next thing I want to do is I want to create an offset of those points. So grid utility, offset points. I'm going to make my distance 200. I'm going to select these points, hit enter, select the surface. Oops, select this base surface. Hold on. Okay, hold on. I gotta let me go back to the paneling tools. Offset points. Let me make the distance a little bit bigger. Five hundred. I'm gonna select these points. Select the base surface. Okay, now I got a better offset. So then I'm going to go to paneling tools, panel from grid, panel custom 3D. I'm going to select this first, this first group of points, hit enter. This second group of points, this is the bounding surface. And this is the object I want to map. OK, 
Okay. So again, you can see there's a little bit of a irregularity, but nevertheless, you can still uh, create some pretty interesting geometries based on these cage edit commands. And this can be perfect if you're sort of trying to visualize an overhang, or maybe you're designing a subway station and you want some interesting uh, roof enclosure. But for the most part, uh, the cage edit command is, is, is definitely a very powerful tool uh, in terms of uh, editing surfaces and getting unique surfaces. And it really works well with the gumball function. So thank you.